Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In this video, we will learn about Colpitts oscillator. Now, this Colpitts oscillator is one kind of LC oscillator and it is used for the generation of a high frequency signal, typically in the range of radio frequencies. So, in this oscillator, the LC circuit is used in the feedback path of the oscillator. And as we know, this LC circuit oscillates at the resonant frequency. So, in a way, this LC tank circuit provides a frequency selectivity for this oscillator. Now, in the previous video of the resonance, we have already talked about this LC circuit. But here, let us briefly understand the working of this LC circuit. And let us see how this LC circuit provides the frequency selectivity. So, here we have a LC tank circuit and here let us assume that the capacitor is initially charged to some finite voltage. Or we can say that initially some finite voltage is applied to this LC tank circuit. So, whenever some finite voltage is applied, then the capacitor starts charging towards this supply voltage. And as soon as this capacitor fully gets charged, then let's say we have disconnected this voltage supply. So, as soon as we disconnect this voltage supply, then this capacitor starts discharging through this inductor. Or we can say that the electrostatic energy of the capacitor will get stored across the inductor and the inductor will store this energy in the form of magnetic field. So, over the period of time, the voltage across the capacitor will reduce and at one point of time, the voltage across the capacitor will become zero. So, at that point, there should not be any flow of the current through the inductor. But as we know, the inductor opposes the instantaneous change in the current. So, according to the Lenz law, it produces a back EMF so that the same amount of current can continuously flow through the inductor. So, because of this back EMF, the same amount of current will flow through the inductor. And because of that, now the capacitor starts charging in the reverse direction. So, gradually, the energy which is stored across the inductor will get converted into the electrostatic energy of the capacitor. And once this capacitor gets fully charged, then this capacitor once again discharges through the inductor in the reverse direction. So, in this way, in this LC tank circuit, the energy gets transferred between the inductor and the capacitor. And because of that, we are getting uh, oscillations in the output. And the frequency of the oscillation can be given by the expression 1 divided by 2 pi times under root LC. Now, so far in this discussion, we have assumed that in this tank circuit, this inductor and the capacitor are ideal. But in reality, this inductor has some finite ohmic contacts as well as this capacitor has some finite leakage current. And because of that, over the period of time, these oscillations will die out. So, to get the sustained oscillations, we need to provide the external energy to this LC tank circuit. And in case of the LC oscillators, this energy is provided through the amplifier circuit. Now, in general, if we talk about the LC oscillator, then this LC circuit used to have a three elements. And depending upon the type of the elements, this LC oscillator can be classified in the different categories. So, in the feedback circuit, if Z1 and Z2 are capacitors and Z3 is inductor, then this configuration is known as the Colpitts oscillator. On the other end, if this Z1 and Z2 are inductor and Z3 is capacitor, then this type of configuration is known as the Hartley oscillator. So, in this video, we will focus on the Colpitts oscillator. So, this is a basic block diagram of the Colpitts oscillator. So, in this Colpitts oscillator, Either a transistor or the op-amp can be used as an amplifier. While on the feedback path, we used to have this LC tank circuit. So, it consists of two capacitors and one inductor. Now, in general, if we talk about the any LC oscillator circuit, then the feedback circuit used to provide a 180 degree of phase shift and the remaining 180 degree of phase shift is provided by the amplifier circuit. So, that the overall phase shift of the circuit will become 0 degree. And the gain of the amplifier and the feedback circuit is set in a such a way that the loop gain of the circuit will become unity. And by satisfying these two criteria, we can get the sustained oscillations. So, like I said, in these oscillators, 
we can use either transistor or op-amp as an amplifier. So first of all, let us see how this Colpitt's oscillator can be designed using the transistor. So here, this transistor is configured as an amplifier, while this LC tank circuit is connected in the feedback path. So whenever the circuit is just turned on, at that time, this LC tank circuit starts resonating at the resonating frequency, but the amplitude of this frequency will be very low. So here, through this capacitor C2, the fraction of this generated signal is given as a feedback to this amplifier circuit. And this amplifier circuit amplifies the feedback signal. And the amplified signal is once again fed to this feedback circuit. So here, by adjusting the loop gain of this amplifier and the feedback circuit, we can get the sustained oscillations at the resonating frequency. And here, the frequency of the oscillation f can be given by the expression 1 divided by 2 pi times under root LC, where C is equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Now this same culpit oscillator circuit can also be designed using the op-amp. So here, this transistor is replaced by this op-amp. And here the op-amp is configured in the inverting configuration. But if you see the feedback circuit, the feedback circuit remains the same. So here, the output is measured across this capacitor C2, while the feedback circuit is provided via this capacitor C1. So here, the ratio of this C2 by C1 is also known as the feedback fraction. That is the amount of signal which is being fed back to the amplifier circuit. And we will talk more about it whenever we derive the expression for the frequency. So now let us derive the expression of the frequency for the Colpitt's oscillator. So for the derivation, we will assume that the gain that is provided by the amplifier is equal to AV and the amplifier has a finite output impedance of R0. Apart from that, we will also assume that the input impedance of the amplifier is very high, meaning that no current is flowing into the input terminals. And for the simplification, we will consider this capacitor C1, C2 and inductor L as Z1, Z2 and Z3. So under this assumption, as no current is flowing into the input terminals, this impedance Z1 and Z3 will be in a series. And the equivalent circuit in the feedback can be represented like this. So at one end, we have a output voltage V out and the other end is connected to the ground. And through this impedance Z1, the feedback signal is given to this amplifier circuit. So here, this feedback voltage Vf will be equal to Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z3 times V0. Or we can say that the feedback fraction beta, that is Vf by V0, is equal to Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z3. Now, if we see this circuit from the output side, then the entire feedback network will appear as a load to this output terminal. And let's say the equivalent impedance of this feedback network is equal to Zp. So we can say that Zp will be equal to Z2 in parallel with Z1 plus Z3. So this impedance will appear as a load across this output terminal. And the equivalent circuit will look like this. So here, the input signal is amplified by the voltage gain of AV and the amplifier also provides a 180 degree of phase shift. So if we consider the output impedance of the amplifier, then the output which is appearing across this load Zp will be equal to Zp divided by Zp plus R0 times minus AV times V in or we can say that V0 by V in will be equal to minus AV times Zp divided by Zp plus R0. Now here, let's say the ratio of this output voltage by input voltage is equal to A, which is the overall gain of the amplifier. Now if this output impedance R0 is 0, in that case, this A and AV both are equal. But because of some finite output impedance, this overall voltage gain will be slightly less than the AV. So this voltage gain A can be written as minus AV times 
zp divided by zp plus r naught so here let's put the value of zp in this expression and we know that zp is equal to z2 parallel z1 plus z3 so if you put the value of the zp and if we simplify the expression then the overall voltage gain a will be equal to minus av times z2 into z1 plus z3 divided by z2 into z1 plus z3 plus ro times z1 plus z2 plus z3 now earlier like we have discussed the feedback fraction for this oscillator will be equal to z1 divided by z1 plus z3 so if we multiply this feedback fraction beta by this overall voltage gain then we will get the loop gain so the loop gain a beta will become minus a b times z2 into z1 plus z3 times z1 divided by z1 plus z3 so here this term is nothing but the feedback fraction and in the denominator we will have z2 times z1 plus z3 plus r0 times z1 plus z2 plus z3 so if we simplify that expression then the loop gain a beta can be represented like this so for the colpitts oscillator now let us put the value of the z1 z2 and z3 so here for the colpitts oscillator this z1 is equal to 1 by j omega c1 while z2 is equal to 1 by j omega c2 and z3 is the reactance of this inductor which is equal to j omega l so if you put the value of this z1 z2 and z3 then the loop gain a beta can be represented like this and if we simplify this expression then the a beta can be represented like this so here to get a zero degree of phase shift the imaginary term in the denominator should be equal to zero or we can say that c1 plus c2 should be equal to omega square l times c1 times c2 or we can say that omega square should be equal to c1 plus c2 divided by l times c1 times c2 that means omega will be equal to 1 by under root l times c equivalent where c equivalent is equal to c1 c2 divided by c1 plus c2 so in this way we got the expression of the frequency for the colpitts oscillator now let us put this value of omega in this expression so under this condition a beta will be equal to this a b divided by minus 1 plus omega square l times c1 and if you put the value of this omega that is omega is equal to 1 by under root l times c equivalent then this loop gain a beta will be equal to a b times c2 divided by c1 now for the sustained oscillations the loop gain a beta should be equal to 1 and under that condition this voltage gain av will become c1 divided by c2 now like i said earlier this overall voltage gain a is slightly less than this av but if we assume that the output impedance r not is much less than the overall impedance zp in that case this gain a is approximately equal to av and under this condition the feedback fraction beta will be equal to c2 divided by c1 so this is the expression of the feedback fraction so using this expression of omega we can find the frequency of oscillation for the colpitts oscillator and using this feedback fraction beta we can set the gain of the amplifier such that we can get the sustained oscillations so to understand that let us take one example so here we have given this colpitt oscillator circuit and in this circuit we have been asked to find the frequency as well as the gain which is required for the sustained oscillation so here as we have given the value of c1 c2 and l so it is easy to find the frequency and as we know the frequency f can be given by the expression 1 divided by 2 pi times under root l times 
C equivalent, where C equivalent is equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So if you put the value of the C1 and C2, then the C equivalent will be equal to 1.66 nanofarad. And if you put the value of the C equivalent and this inductor L in this expression, then the value of frequency F will roughly come around as 27.5 kilohertz. So this is the oscillation frequency for the Colpitts oscillator. Now let us find the value of the gain for the sustained oscillations. So if you observe over here, the feedback fraction beta is equal to C2 divided by C1. And in this case, it is equal to 1 by 5. So the gain of the amplifier should be more than 5. Now here, the op-amp is configured in the inverting configuration. And as we know, in the inverting configuration, the gain of the op-amp can be given as minus Rf divided by R1. Now here, if you only consider the magnitude of the gain, then the gain of this amplifier should be more than 5. So here, let us assume that R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm. And to get a gain of more than 5, the value of this RF should be more than 5 kilo ohm. So in this way, by using this expression, we can design a Colpitts oscillator of the desired frequency. And by using this feedback fraction beta, we can set the gain of the amplifier to get the sustained oscillations. So like I said earlier, this Colpitts oscillator is used for the generation of very high frequencies, typically in the range of RF frequencies. And that is why it is very useful in mobile and communication systems. Apart from that, this Colpitt oscillator is also used for the generation of the surface acoustic waves. So these are the few applications of this Colpitt oscillator. So I hope in this video you understood how we can design the Colpitt oscillator and how it can be used for the generation of the high frequencies. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos.